it's not a walkthrough, playthrough, review, anything like that. It's just me playing the game badly, so you can see what it looks like. Okay then, this is Magic Pockets on the Commodore Amiga. It occurs to me that I've got a stretched screen. That sounds weird, doesn't it? There. Several of the Amiga videos I have done will be looking stretched. Apologies for that. Anyway, um, I've never played this. I don't know what I'm doing. Only thing I know about this... What the hell? Only thing I know about this game is I watched it in demo mode in a... I think it was like Tandy or something, or Dixon's shop window at the time that I was just getting into 16-bit gaming and I had a Mega Drive and I saw this and I had been thinking about getting an Amiga and having played Sonic the Hedgehog and then seeing this it convinced me why on earth would I get an Amiga if games on it were like this when the Mega Drive was doing games like Sonic the Hedgehog because the way it moves um, it's not that it's not capable of smooth, 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 smooth movement because the jumping is just fine but it's while he's walking because he's taking steps it just looks jerky it isn't jerky it's just the way it's animated um, uh, but it just made me think, this is rubbish. Oh, God. And what the hell is it? What, what is he lobbing? It looks like, I don't know, cast iron bunches of grapes. Get off. But, yeah, I was so unimpressed with the just the way it looked, the way it moved, something about it. It was like, it's horrible. <laughs> Playing it now, um... It is technically better than I thought at the time. I can see that about it. Um, having said that, um, there is something that's just very, very English about it. That when you've got used to Japanese games and the way the Japanese characterise their 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 games and their their level, I'll oh, get off me, you bastard their level design and their character design and all of that lot this is what I could only describe as lumpy it's, it has a certain English weirdness about it which I like but um, you get you can get spoiled by real, oh dear, slick production values and, and level design and character design and all of that. Um, so that when you do come to a thing like this, you maybe don't appreciate the, the quirkiness of it. And it's, it put me off buying, well, it put me off buying an Amiga for quite a long while. Where it's like these snails, they're they're like um, they're like some kind of BBC kids show kind of character. I can't think of what. Oh God, get yeah, just bugger off. And you, jumping on their heads doesn't work. Too much Mario, and I don't even like Mario. Get off. And I don't like the traje tra God trajectory of these, whatever it is I'm throwing. Not sure what they are. It's weird. Yeah, there it is. I'm fighting my own um, preconceptions and expectations and stuff with this game because. I can look at it and acknowledge oh, that it is well done. It is. It's well programmed. Effort has gone into the character design. Um, 
Something about spin to kill nasties. Have I got a different control? Well, I don't know. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Mm hmm. Doesn't seem to have. Yeah, I'm I'm struggling with my own preconceptions and and expectations and all of that because I think I don't know how popular this game was. It is a cut above. I mean, this is compared to say that Magic. No, what was it? Not Kid Chaos. The the one Kid Gloves. Compared to Kid Gloves, this is a good professional piece of coding well done and everything you know the kind of thing you wouldn't complain to pay money for where that was maybe not so much um, but I don't know what those arrows are all about what are they for are they are they telling me where I want to go or are they something else I don't know oh god Oh, get off. Get off. Just get off. Ah, come on. I'm going to surely go... Oh, yeah. Okay. I am done. I, uh, I think it's a good game. I don't like it. <laughs> Figure that one out. I struggle. Mm. Okay, that is... Um, kid Gloves. Is it? Tell you in a second. If I can. Why? Oh, because wrong button. There. Come on. Why is this not working now? No, it's not kid gloves. It's magic pockets in it. Yeah. Because I can't remember. Because I'm old. Okay. Thank you for watching. Okay then, today's question for Q&A, excuse me while I just get myself into a better position. Yeah, uh, question for Q&A from Growing Perspective, link to his channel down there. Um, for Q&A, you have to remove one console or computer from history and keep another from flopping commercially. I've been pondering this and I completely didn't notice the word computer <laughs> so now I'm I had an answer and I'm thinking is that the answer I want to give uh, <clears throat> no I'm, I'm gonna change my answer now um, what would I remove from history <sighs> all right I'm gonna give the same answer for this as uh, as I was originally going to give I would remove the Sega Saturn. Um, I, I want a little bit of flexibility here. I want to manipulate the timeline slightly and, and give some other conditions, if you like. Remove the Sega Saturn. Have Sega support the 32X and bring out the, uh, the Neptune because, well, that makes kind of sense, since um, 32X being an add-on for the Mega Drive and the Neptune being a Mega Drive with the 32X built in, have them do that. That is their stopgap to keep the Mega Drive going so that they can concentrate on the Dreamcast and bring it out sooner or just having not dropped support for the 32X and Neptune, everyone won't have decided, yeah, Sega are full of crap, we're not going to buy their stuff anymore. That's what I'd do. Saturn was, I mean, obviously it was more powerful than the 32X, but having the two out at the same time, pretty much bad move. Um, they, it just, their reputation was trashed because they kept dropping their stuff. Well, support for it anyway. Yeah. 
Yep, ditch the Saturn out of history, have them support and, and promote and really put in a bit of effort into the, the 32X and Neptune and then Dreamcast, you know, do it properly, stop messing about, stop pissing off your, your, your buyers, really. Um, what computer, and we're going computer here, would I like to uh, save from commercial failure? It's sitting down there and it's called a Commodore Amiga. Um, God, yeah. It was a fantastic system. It, on just on its abilities, on its per, well, for a while performance, you know, it was so versatile. It could do so much. It should have survived. It was just mismanaged, underfinanced. Commodore were concentrating on PC compatibles, which was a stupid market for them to get into. Um, when they should have been developing the the Amiga. Um, and having it keep up with the PC, or stay ahead of the PC as it was for a time. Um, you know, there are arguments about, oh, it shouldn't have been a games machine, it was a serious computer. Well, bollocks to that. It, its sales were, um, I think, mainly through as a games machine. I think the, thir the CD32 was a great idea. They should have, you know, fine... It's a productivity machine and a serious computer. Fine, it's a gaming computer that can do both. Fine, whatever, but they they should have um, concentrated on the Amiga and not the PC. Uh, they screwed that up royally. Yeah, should have got some 3D hardware into it. It was being developed. Well, no, I, I, Commodore weren't developing it. There was like a AAA chipset being developed that never got finished other companies, Phase 5, who were, uh, I've got one of their accelerator cards, the 060 board I've got in there, uh, they were coming up or developing a graphics card, I remember the name of it, it was supposed to give the Amiga PlayStation 1, well PlayStation, similar kind of capabilities and it was called Kaiperina. And I was reading about it eagerly. Every month I'd read, like, what's the latest news on Kaiperina? And it never happened. Damn shame. That, coupled with, like, one of your Phase 5 accelerators, uh, there was one, I think it existed, with a 68060, and was it a G3? I think they were they were going... Power PC chipset sort of thing. Uh, there was a board that had both of those, so you had the backward compatibility, super speedy, and your Power PC architecture all on one card. Stick that and a Kaiperina into an Amiga gaming monster. It would have been, but I mean, it would have needed software support, and there wasn't a whole lot of that that I'm aware of. But since I didn't have a Power PC based Amiga, I, I don't know what support for that was like, but that's all by the by because that was third party stuff. Really though, yeah, what would I like to say from commercial failure? The Amiga, um, complete no brainer. Wonderful machine, loved the operating system, and I do mean the operating system, not the graphics user interface. I remember someone having a go at me about that. They thought I was just talking about the interface because I said I knew it inside out once upon a time, and I did. I knew. <laughs> I knew how to make things work on it, not just how to find them on the front end. Whatever. Blah. Gonna shut up now. Brain's going dirt. I'm ill. Uh, you don't want the details. <coughs> There's part of it. Okay. Short video. Best I can do at the moment. Th uh, if you've got a question you would like answering in a video like this, leave your question in the comments below. Um, begin with four Q&A so I know not to just answer in the comments. And thank you for watching. Patreon? That's not even a word. You made it up. <laughs>